Module 10, this time pages 329 to 334. And this time we will be covering how to predict reactions between acids and bases. So your book does a beautiful job of explaining it and leading you through the process and I tried to break it down into a few steps. So here we go. Predicting acid and base reactions. Almost always you are going to have an acid plus a base and you will yield a salt, which is just a fancy term for, well, it's not very fancy, isn't it? It's a term for an ionic compound. We call NaCl table salt, but that's just one example of a salt because it's an ionic compound. All right, so we have an ionic compound or a salt and water. So here are some steps. First of all, you're gonna remove the H plus ion from the acid, which means that first you have to identify the acid. Remember that most of the time, the acid will be a compound that starts, whose first atom in the compound is H, is hydrogen, okay? Also, some acids can donate more than one H plus. We call these acids polyprotic. An example would be, We'll do this in a different color, uh, H2SO4 would be an example of a polyprotic acid because it could donate two hydrogen atoms, two protons, all right? Um, if it donates two, it's called diprotic, to be more specific. If it donates three, like in H3PO4, that's an acid that's called a triprotic because it can donate three protons or H plus ions. All right, so after you remove the H plus from the acid, then you remove the OH negative, the hydroxide ion from the base because most bases have the hydroxide ion in them. Uh, the first product that you list is the salt and it is made of the positive ion from the base, okay? When you take away the OH minus from the base, you're gonna be left with a positive ion. So the salt uses that positive ion and the negative ion from the acid. Similarly, when you take away the H plus from the acid, you're gonna be left behind with a negative ion. So that positive ion from the base and the negative ion from the acid are what are joining together to form the salt. And then your second product is water. And then once you predict your, um, once you have predicted your products over here, then you need to remember to balance the equation. And here's a little hint because it can get a little tricky to balance these equations. I like to write HOH -H for water. You'll see that HOH is really the same, right, as H2O. It's just written a little differently. And you're allowed to do that, okay, for water. You're allowed to write HOH. Um, you can always switch it later when you're writing, writing your final answer. But you'll see when we are balancing equations that it is very handy to keep the hydroxide ion visible in your balancing. All right? So here is a simple example, and then we'll try a couple harder ones. All right, example, you will see uh, that you're told to give the balanced equation between H, F, and K, O, H. All right, there's an example of a type of problem that you will be given. You'll be asked to give the balanced equation for the reaction between HF and KOH. All right, so what we would do is we would first identify which is which. HF is going to be our acid, and KOH is our base. The next step is that we're gonna remove the H plus from the acid. So I'm gonna rewrite it as H plus and F negative. And then we're gonna remove the OH minus from the base. Plus K 
plus, now I can tell what charge K or potassium has here because I know that the hydroxide ion only has one negative. So if there's one negative on the hydroxide ion, it must just be one positive for potassium here. But you can also check and look in your, on your beloved table. Okay, so then if we remove the OH from the base, okay, then we are ready to predict our products. The products, the first product is the salt. It's the positive ion from the base, so that would be the K plus. And the negative ion from the acid, so that would be the F minus. And remember, if you're going to write this as an ionic compound, which you should, because in reactions, chemists write out the actual compound, even though we know that the compound separates into the two ions when dissolved in water, we still write it together as the ionic compound. So if you remember from a couple modules back, you just drop the number. Our number is already dropped because it's a one, one plus and one negative. Sorry, you drop the signs and then you just flip-flop the numbers. But here we have a one and a one, so they even each other out, or they cancel each other out. So this would be KF, all right? And then our second product is water, H2O. And you can write it H2O, or you can write it, as I suggested in these kinds of problems, as HOH. And then you need to make sure that your reaction or you, your equation is balanced. So we're gonna write it all over again, this time using all of the compounds because that's how the chemists do it. So HF will bring back together plus KOH yields KF and HOH or water. And if you look at that, we see we have one H here, one H here, the first H on the water we have one fluorine, we have one fluorine on the right, we have one K, we have one K on the right, and we have one OH. Remember, I'm gonna keep that together for ease of balancing. And we have one OH on the right. So this one's already balanced. So there's our final answer. So that was a pretty simple one. Now, I'm sadly going to erase all of these beautiful rules, but you have them in your notes so you can refer back to them as I do for another more complicated example. I guess I can erase this too. Okay, so let's move on to another example. Let's go to the examples from your book in example 10.2. Need to dry this off a little bit better. 